If you are producing music in Ableton and you've heard the term bus get thrown around and you're not quite sure what that means, well, the quick answer is in Ableton, we actually do busing by grouping. You can do busing, but Ableton isn't inherently set up like that. And so today I'm gonna to talk about why grouping is important and the difference between grouping and busing. So really quick, if you're using something like Logic, the way that they use Logic is you've got buses. And a bus would be something like this. You have, um, let's say you've got these pianos here. And then if you got this basically auxiliary track, and so you would set this up or you'd have like a bus. And let's say you can label it something like uh, pianos. And so what you do is this would be routed out through the main and on this channel, you would have stuff like, you know, different effects. Like let's say uh, compression. Let's say if you wanted to kind of glue the pianos together, and then what you would do is you would take each one of these and then send it through the bus, which then would affect everything that you send through here would get affected by this compressor. It's funny, even like talking that out, I just I would never want to work like that. Um, maybe if I was using something like Logic, it would make sense. But well, what we do in Ableton, and it's important if you are a beginner, is to start getting used to doing this now, is we actually do grouping. So if you look up here to my actual project, I've got drums, bass, mids, effects, vocals. These are my large groups, and then we can do groups within groups. But let's say that I have these pianos here, and these are all the same piano. I just labeled them differently for example's sake. What you can do is you can highlight these. So piano, 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 highlight them, control G. And now the way that this is gonna automatically route is it's going to send each one of these. So look, piano, and now it says group right here, right? 64 group. And so what that means is that any effect that you put on this individual channel, it's gonna affect this piano but then it's gonna route it to this group area. And so now let's say if I want to compress all three of these pianos at the same time, glue them together with compression, I would throw a glue compressor on this group and then I can put any other effect on this group. Every piano in this group, go, it goes through this section. And then now from here, and you can see it gets routed to the main, which is the master channel. And you can actually do groups within groups. And so let's say I've got piano right here, you know, like I have it set up over here, right? I'll even go up to my project. So I've got my mids and highs, but then within this group, I've got my pads set up. And so now I've got these big pads right here. And each one of these is going to be routed through to this pad group. And that allows me to do different things. Like I can automate all of them, like you can see here. I've got this gain automated. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and take a listen. I have these pads and I've automated for them to all slowly get gradually louder up until this section here. And I may end up putting some, you know, saturation on them to kind of saturate them all the same way and have cohesiveness that way. We'll see what I end up doing, but that's how Grouping works in Ableton. It's really important, and it's important that you start getting used to grouping. You know, I think uh, when I first started out, and I think a lot of newbies, you, you start out, and then you just kind of, you'd have no organization. So you start with a piano, and then let's say you add another instrument, and then you have like your drums, and then you have just, just like 50 tracks all lined up after each other, and there's no grouping at all. That's, you're just gonna get, end up confusing yourself, kind of get lost in your project, and, you're not going to be able to add effects and do group processing, which is really important if you want to add some cohesiveness to your different individual instruments and, you know, in, in general, be able to mix your track in a professional sounding way. So I just wanted to point this out there that in Ableton, we do grouping. It is possible to send up a bus and do it that way. I wouldn't recommend it. It's just way easier to just group things. And then, like I said before, when you group things, they're gonna automatically basically set up themselves in a way, the way the signal flow goes, is gonna go from the individual level to the main group to the, the master channel here, okay? So I hope this helps. I just wanted to point this out, whether you're a beginner or maybe you're even more intermediate and you've heard the term bus being thrown around. 
Uh, well, in Ableton, really doesn't matter. Just focus on grouping. And if you're still here and you wanna get good at mixing and mastering fast, I would look in the description below. Join my course, Mix Immersions. I set this up so it's all encompassing. You can learn everything you need to know in just a week or two, depending on how fast you wanna go through the course. And then you can join my Discord group where you can ask me questions, share your music with other members of the group, things like that. I also have a mini course. It's a lot cheaper. It's about 50 bucks. You can just grab the mini course, watch me mix and master a track from start to finish. If you like my teaching style, you might enjoy that. So go ahead and check that out and I'll see you guys again on the next video. All right, see ya.